I'm here in Excel and I want to show you what macros can do for you. Basically they will record a set of tasks that you do repeatedly and then you can just press a button or a shortcut key and it will replay and do all of those for you. It could be opening a workbook, importing something, reformatting, adding in formulas, you name it. Basically anything that you do you can record it. I'm going to show you how to record here. I'm on the Mac at the moment, but I'm also going to show you some of the bits that are a tiny bit different on Windows, but they're very small little bits. But it basically works exactly the same way. So not only can you record a macro, but you can actually edit them as well. But we won't be going into that here, but look out for other tutorials that I'm going to do where you can actually see how to do that. So the things we're going to do is I'm going to be adding a button to the ribbon so that you can click on it to run the macro and also we're going to be doing a shortcut key as well. So a couple of things that are a little bit different. So if you look down here in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see it's got like this scroll here and that's one way of getting to record the macro. If I click on it, it will pop up here, but we're going to look at it somewhere else in a moment. On Windows, it looks a little bit different down the bottom here. You'll see it looks like a little record button. So if you click on that, you'll get the same thing. But you'll also find it here in view. So if you go into view, you'll see that it's got record macro here as well. You also have it in developer. Now you might not have this developer tab. So on Windows, you can right click here on your ribbon and choose customize ribbon. On the Mac, you're going to go into Excel and you're going to go into preferences. And when you go to the ribbon and toolbar, it's this bit that's kind of the same. And over here, you'll see that it's got the developer tick and you'll see it will also have that as well on the Windows version. So if it's unticked, it won't be on. If I click on save, you'll see it's, and I close that, you'll see it's gone. Going back into my preferences and then into my ribbon and toolbar. And then again, I can just tick developer to switch it on. And as I said, you can right click and choose customize ribbon on Windows to get into there. Or you could go into file and choose options as well to get to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna record a macro and that's going to format this data here. We're also going to put in some totals and we will save it as well. And once I start recording, it's pretty much the same on the Mac and Windows. So let's do that. Let's go into view at the top. Don't forget I said you could also click on that little icon down in the bottom left hand corner. Let's go to record macro. It's a good idea to give it a name. So you can't have any spaces in here, but you could have underscore. So I'm going to do format imported underscore sales. Where am I storing it? I'm storing it in this workbook. So this macro will work only in this book workbook or when this workbook is open. So this workbook can be open and you can be in another workbook. All of these are the same on Windows. Or you could put it into a personal macro workbook. And what that is, is it's kind of like a global workbook hidden in the background that will work on any one of your spreadsheets. So maybe you have a, something that you do on all of them, a particular kind of formatting, and you want it to always be available. You could put it into a new workbook as well, and then you could be saving that and opening that when you need it. We're gonna put it into this workbook. You don't have to, but you can create a shortcut key. So you can also assign a shortcut key. Now, the thing about this is it's a tiny bit different on Windows. So looking at Windows, you've got control here and then a shortcut key. As I said, I'm also going to show you how to put a button onto the ribbon as well. So what you can do is let's say, for example, you wanted the letter F for format imported sales. You just type in F. And you could do the same on Windows, you can do Control F. Now, the problem is, is that Control F is also find in the Windows version. But if you do the capital letter F, none of the capital letters are assigned. And in fact, if you do that here on the Mac, 
you will also find it does it as Control Shift F. And that will be the same again, Control Shift F, also on the Windows version. OK, so once you've done that, we're just going to click on OK. And what you'll see in the bottom left hand corner is it's got a little square like a stop button so you know you're recording. And when you're done, press stop. If you forget to stop, it's going to keep recording what you're doing in Excel. And yeah, I've done that. I've accidentally gone and kept on recording and then ended up with a very big macro which I've deleted later. OK, so we're here on this spreadsheet. First thing I want to do is I just want to delete these two rows. So I'm just going to highlight those. I'm going to right click and choose delete. So that's gone. I'm going to make these bold and italic. So let's just go back to the home tab. And let's just do italic as well. And then let's do the same down here. Now we'll also remember everything you type. Oh, by the way, just one little hint. If you're doing a macro, make sure you're not going to get disturbed because say the phone rings or something like that, you might then have to go and do something else and that could mess up your macro. OK, so let's just type in total here. And it's remembered my formatting. Let's go across. I'm going to do my auto sum at the top, which again is on the home tab. Let's just click on that. It's done that. Let's just highlight it and I can just fill across. I can also put a box around all of this. So I'm just going through here and formatting. And there we go. And if I wanted to, I could rename this sheet as imported data and it is remembering all these things including if I wanted to make a copy of it so if I right click here to make a copy of that sheet I can move it to the end create a copy and OK. So anything I'm doing in here if I wanted to do any data such as subtotals or anything like that it will do that for me so there you go let's just highlight some of that it might not be pretty but you're getting the idea and in fact anywhere that I click it's going to remember those as well. Once you're done you can then just hit stop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all my formatting here. Let's go into my clear formats all gone back to normal and I also had two rows in here as well didn't I? Let's just do that and I'm going to put in here imported sales. Okay so I said to you that I did this as a shortcut key. So let's do Control shift f and there it's done that. and you can see just how quick that is and how much time that would save you could do it to print you could do it to save things to a pdf and so on so one of the things i do need to do here before i forget is going to file and choose save now it's a macro so it needs to be saved in a slightly different format to continue saving as a macro free, free workbook click yes no i'm not going to do that i'm going to click on no and I need to change it to a macro enabled workbook here. And I'm just going to hit save. Now, before we go and start looking at everything in, so before we go and start looking at everything in the Windows version, let's just close this and let's just open it. So it'll be under my recent here. I want to show you this because when I open it, it's got macros in here. And because of viruses and all sorts of things like that, you do need to enable the macros. So, so if you were sent something in Excel and you weren't expecting any macros, hit disable macros. Otherwise, enable macros and all of this will come on here. OK, I'm going to show you how to put it on the ribbon in here and then we're going to switch over to Windows and I'm going to show you how everything works over there. So in here, what I need to do is go into Excel go into my preferences and we're going to go to the ribbon and toolbar. Now the thing I need to do is I need to create a group for it. So I can do one of two things here. I could create 
a new tab across the top, which would be my macros, or I could put a group somewhere in here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to click on plus and I'm going to choose a new group. So the group is within um, the tab itself. So let's just do new group. It's going to be putting it into the home one there. I want to rename it. So let's just go rename and I'm going to call this one macros. I could call it whatever I like if they happen to be a particular group of macros that do a certain kind of thing. Now I need to add that macro that I created. So let's just click here, go to macros. There it is. You can see I've got another one and I'm just going to add it. When I then save it and close this, you'll see over here, it's now got my format imported sales over there. I need now to run it. I just need to get rid of a few things and put things back the way that they were. Let's just delete that. OK, now the great thing about having this button is that if someone else is using it, they don't have to know what the shortcut key is. And also you don't then don't have to remember the shortcut key. So let me just click on that. Bosh, there you go. It's done it for you. Now, the other thing is I could have also created a tab where maybe I'm going to have loads of macros in here. Once you get into this, you can really get going. So let's just go into my Excel preferences, go to my ribbon and toolbar, and I'm going to click on the plus sign here. I'm going to create a new tab called I think I'm going to call it, let's do this, let's rename it, rename, I think I'm going to call this my macros. And you'll see it's already put in by default a new group here and you could give that a name. Why not call this one formatting? So let's just do that. Okay, and then back here to my macros and I can then add as many macros as need be for that group or for that tab. So let's just do save, close that. And then you can see it's got my macros over here. So that's in there. OK, let's just take a look at this over on Windows. So here in Windows, we can customize the ribbon just by right clicking anywhere here on the ribbon. I tend to choose a blank space. You've got customize the ribbon. This bit looks very similar. On the Mac, it had a plus here. Here you can see it's got buttons to create the new tab and the new group. So the group, as I said, could go into any one of these. Here you can see the developer tab that I mentioned before that's on the Mac version as well. So I think what I'd like to do is create a new tab on here. Let's do that. And there's my new tab. I could move that tab. So you may have noticed on the Mac version, it was right after the Home tab. I could do the same thing. I could move it down here. So maybe it's more towards the right hand side. Let's put it after View. I'm going to rename that as well to My Macros and click on OK. And then that new group there, we're just going to rename that to Formatting. OK, so let's just click on OK. Now, same again, I can go into here, choose macros from this drop down box. There it is. I have got my module here and I can choose that. Let's just click add there. Let's click on OK. Here's my macros tab. This doesn't look very pretty here. So let's go right click, customize the ribbon. Let's go to here. Let's click on that rename and let's do format sales. OK, and let's just click on OK again. So I've closed out of that spreadsheet. I want to show you that same warning that I got about enabling the macros here. So if I go into file and then just choose macro recording. When it goes to open, it appears here in a bar as opposed to a box that appeared, a dialog box. And you can see it says macros have been disabled. Let's choose enable content. Our macros should now work. Do you want to make this a trusted document? Yes, because I created it. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to 
insert here a couple of rows and just put in that imported sales. Okay, now let's go to the ma my macros here. Let's click on that and let's click on format sales. There we go. It's done the same thing that it did on the Mac. So you can see just a couple of little differences, but overall the recording process is the same. And well, I created the macro on the Mac and guess what? It worked over here on Windows as well and it will work the other way around. So if you create a macro, you don't have to worry about whether someone is using a Mac or a PC at the other end, except for possibly where you might want to save it or open it if you've chosen that as something that you can do. Now there's a lot more you can do with macros. You can create input boxes, dialog boxes, and so on. If you want to know more, please do come back. I'll be adding all the time onto my YouTube channel here. And I do have some other videos here on macros as well as many other things. So do have a look around here on my channel. Thanks for watching. If you do like this, please do like, share and subscribe and come back for more.